Good morning. Please rise for the presentation of the colors and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty, and justice. Please remain standing. Good morning, esteemed audience of students, faculty, parents, and distinguished guests, including our honored United States veterans. I'm Jalen Blackwell, a proud member of the class of 2028 and middle school student government president. I also have the privilege of leading our tribute as master of ceremonies. Today, gathered in this significant ceremony, we're privileged to express our heartfelt gratitude to the courageous individuals who have served our nation selflessly. I would also like to recognize Maryland State Senator Chris West and Maryland State Senator Benjamin Brooks who are here with us today. Thank you both for joining us on this momentous occasion. Senator Brooks is a veteran, Sergeant E-5, who worked three years in Vietnam. Our purpose here today is to honor the invaluable contributions of those who have fearlessly defended our country. These heroes exemplify the essence of courage, embodying principle number four, be courageous in the face of adversity. They risk their lives daily, fully aware of the sacrifices they might make, yet remain resolute in protecting our citizens. Today, we unite to pay tribute to all who have served, continue to serve, and will serve in the future. Thank you.
Hello and good morning. My name is Josie Conley. I'll be sharing a poem with you that was written by a Gerstel Academy middle school student. Please enjoy the reading. Veterans have to make the cut. Their flesh and blood are saved by luck. The ruthless life has no hue, like a band director who doesn't cue. It's sad that their children never know whether they'll walk through that door with a bruise. So I need you to fix your view and understand the television's news. The veterans are humans too. You know my dad fights. Pretty cool, huh? Veterans need help, not just the physical kind. I met one a couple days back, and his mental story made me want to cry. So please thank the veterans as much as you can. They are like America's mother, holding our country's hand. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Um, my name is Kendra Brown, and today I'll be telling you what it means to be a veteran. A veteran, as the dictionary says, is a person who served in the military, especially in war. Yet, being a veteran means more than that. It's about courage, honor, and leadership, our model here at Grisell Academy. Now, imagine risking your lives every day for the safety of your own country. Imagine fighting in a war and losing your friends. What you're imagining is just some of the hardships a veteran must face every single day while you get to imagine this from the safety of your seat. Serving in the military often involves facing dangerous and challenging situations, whether it's being deployed to, into a war zone, navigating through tough conditions, or making split-second decisions. Veterans display remarkable courage in the face of adversity. Their ability to confront fear and with head-on is a testament to their bravery. Veterans positively influence others, others guiding improvements in themselves and their communities. Now, for now, so now, as you leave today and the weekend tomorrow, reflect on how the unwavering courage, respect, and commitment demonstrated by veterans can inspire us all to face life challenges with a similar determination. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jax Buchanan, and I'm speaking to you about the origins of Veterans Day. In 1918, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, an armistice, or a temporary cease of hostilities, was declared in World War I. One year later, President Woodrow Wilson announced November 11th as the first commemoration of Armistice Day. This day's observation included parades and a brief pause in businesses and schools at 11 a.m. In 1938, Armistice Day was changed to Veterans Day and became a federal holiday. The day was changed to Veterans Day in order to honor all veterans. This day is a time to remember all the veterans that have served our country. Please enjoy this short inspirational video. We practiced this beforehand and it worked, so <laughs> technology. without the music.
Good morning. My name is Aya Fatile and I'm honored to speak to you today. There have been many services honoring veterans, focusing on their sacrifices and how they love our country. I've seen many of them since my dad is a soldier himself. All those services and I never understood these sacrifices. When I was given my worry to speak about, I was intrigued by what he went through. PTSD or post-trauma stress disorder is a mental stress disorder that triggers past trauma, causing a stressful reaction. My warrior, Bill Geiger, struggled with PTSD severely. Bill was deployed twice in the United States Army. He also served in the military police in Iraq, Cuba, Camp Bucca, and Guantanamo Bay. He was exposed to mortar attacks and riots, and this deteriorated the formerly vibrant man he was. Once he came back from his tour of duty, his wife immediately felt like something was off, and he felt it too. It affected him and soon started affecting his family. His children walked on eggshells around him. He questioned himself, saying, how do you describe a man who yells at you because you dropped a breadcrumb on the floor? One night, he found his wife's computer and saw an email to their pastor saying that she would divorce him if they step up. He was not going to lose his wife, so he sought help. He sought help at many places such as the Vet Center and the Department of Veterans Affairs before he found the Wounded Warriors Project. He found himself in a mental, will in a mental wellness workshop called Project Odyssey. This project was filled with other veterans, with other veterans, excuse me, with PTSD, who he could relate to. In less than two weeks, Bill had learned about many tools to cope with his PTSD. He then found a new mission, which was to help other warriors. He shares his story to show that reaching out for help is a sign of strength. Bill is a very courageous man who embodied Gerstel's leadership model. He is someone who gives hope to others, inspiring those who struggle. Thank you for listening. Good morning, everybody. I am Mason Nolan. I'll be sharing you a story about Chris Gordon. Chris Gordon is a great example of courage. He joined the Army in 1997. Chris was stationed in Germany when the Twin Towers were hit on September 11, 2001. When the war began, Chris was assigned to a striker armored vehicle unit as an infantry supply sergeant. This is a horrible war with many casualties. In 2005, Chris was on patrol in Tal Afar, Iraq, doing a routine search. As his vehicle tried to get in line at a mosque, an explosion went off. This was an improvised explosion device, an IED. Luckily, the vehicle hatches were open and Chris and another soldier flew out. Had the hatches had been closed, they would both have died. Not only was Chris courageous for patrolling the streets and supporting the U.S. efforts in the war, but now he had to face rehab with courage. The blast took his right leg and he had permanent titanium rod in his left leg. Chris describes his time in the hospital as intense. Chris continued to regain his strength during his physical therapy. He went from a wheelchair to eventually walking with prosthetics, gaining his strength back. While Chris was recovering, he was introduced to the Wounded Warrior Project. They gave him many comfort items. He really felt like it showed people truly cared about him and what had happened. He was so touched, he continued to participate with them. He even did adaptive sports and traveled all over. The Wounded Warrior Project also allowed Chris to return and give thanks to the hospital in Germany where he was treated for his injuries. This is a true story of not only courage, but a leader who showed perseverance. Thank you. I would like to now share with you the names of Gerstel Academy alumni who are currently serving our country. Chet Mockmer, 2012, Rhode Island Air National Guard. Steven Snyder, 2013, United States Air Force. Brett McLaughlin, 2014, United States Army. Richard Nagel, 2014, United States Navy. Jaria Rogers, 2014, United States Army National Guard. Hannah Seeley, 2016, Alaska Air National Guard. Tyler Curtis, 2017, United States Navy. 
Akil Arapathu, 2017, uh, United States Army. Laz Friedberg, 2018, United States Army. Reese Early, 2019, United States Navy. Grant Abbott, 2020, United States Army. Additionally, the following alumni are in military college. Antonio Holland, 2019, United States Military Academy at West Point. Emily Menisini, 2021, United States Naval Academy. Marcel Lucky, 2021, Navy ROTC. Nick Marquez, 2022, Texas A&M Corps of Cadets. Braden Dillon, 2022, United States Merchant Marine Academy. Lastly, Gerstel Academy student Riley Sullivan, class of 2024, has committed to the United States Military Academy at West Point. We are very proud of our alumni who serve. Next, Sasha will bring a microphone around to our guest veterans. We ask that you please introduce yourself by stating your name, branch of military, rank, and years of service. Me first. Good morning. Oops, is this on? You're supposed to. Good morning. Yes. What do you have to do? It's your army voice. Good morning. Uh, Bruce Ryan, a.k.a. Mr. Ryan. <laughs> United States Air Force, 1966 to 70. Uh, duty stations, Okinawa, Vietnam. All right, it's working. Uh, Braden Dillon, um, uh, I'm a graduate. Um, I'm in the Navy, um, and rank, my rank is I'm a midshipman at an academy. And then years of service, well, now present, so. Uh, good morning, David Gaines, United States Marine Corps. Oh. <laughs> Served uh, four years on active duty, seven years in the reserves. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jana Ali, or Senorita Ali, as you guys all know me. Lieutenant Colonel in the Air Force. I served 25 years and five tours of service. Uh, one to Iraq, one to Saudi, one to Djibouti, one to Honduras, and one to Democratic Republic of Congo. <laughs> Richard Hosfeld, I'm a two-year draftee, served in Europe in 62, 63. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I, I'm uh, uh, Ben Brooks. I served in the United States Army, and I'm a Vietnam veteran. I was in country March 71, March 70 to March 71. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. My name is Willie Dash. Uh, I served in the U.S. Air Force from 66 to 70. I was in Vietnam from 69 to 70. And what rank? Uh, E4, Sergeant. <laughs> okay. Charles Adams, I served in the Navy, uh, 64 to 68, two tours in Vietnam, Caribbean, Mediterranean, uh, all at sea. Uh, my rank is uh, B. Uh, both make three, and uh, I thank you all, you veterans. We're all here today. Joe Hamburg, United States Marine Corps. I was an E-4 corporal. I served one tour in Iraq, and I also served in uh, Djibouti. Thank you.
Good morning, Gerstel. My name is Jim Brown. My 20-year career in the Air Force began in 1969, and I was a Master Sergeant in 1989 when I chose to retire. Thank you all for inviting me here today. My name is Master Sergeant Nancy Brown. I served 20 years in the Air Force from 1970 to 1990. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Marfiak. That's with a K at the end. I served in the United States Navy from 1966 to 1999, 33 years. Uh, that includes Vietnam, Lebanon, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Desert Fox, a couple other places. Um, I retired as a Navy senior admiral. Uh, they finally shoved me out the door and told me to get work. Um, no, that's it, 33 years of service, and uh, I'd sign up for more, except I've got to let the young people have a chance. That means you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mike Casey. I served in the Navy from 1978 to 1998. I retired as a commander. I served during the first Gulf War. Good morning, my name is Robert Scarborough. I served in the U.S. Coast Guard from 1968 to 1972. I was in activities Europe for uh, almost my whole hitch. I was in Turkey, Greece, Italy, and Spain. That's where I met my wife. Thank you all, it's proud to be here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ona Martin. And I'm, I was in the U.S. Army, stationed at Fort Detrick, USAMRID, in medical research uh, from 1975 to 1978. Good morning. My name is James Young. I was uh, regular Army 1981 through 1985. I was an E-4 specialist. And uh, I supported, I was in Germany and I supported the Operation Urgent Fury. And thank you for inviting me. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Riker. I was in the United States Air Force from 1970 to 1974. I was an AeroVac medic during the Vietnam War. And I really do appreciate being here, and it is a great school. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Daly. I served in the U.S. Navy as a Lieutenant Commander Supply Corps Officer from 1978 through 1984 and in the Reserves for four more years after that. Um, I really uh, want to thank my daughter-in-law, Jenna Leverts, um, for the invitation here and uh, for a great school for Lorelei and Roxana, our two granddaughters here. And, um, Thank you very much for the invitation to be here today and all the other uh, veterans that serve. Hi, I'm Barbara Dunahue. Uh, I'm a, I was first lieutenant, um, Army nurse, Vietnam, 1966 to 1969. Uh, my name is John Dunahue. Uh, I was in the U.S. Army from 1965 to 68, including a fun tour in Vietnam, and uh, discharged as a captain, and uh, God bless you all. Uh, Tommy Lute, uh, U.S. Navy from 1993 to 2001. I was a nuclear machinist mate, second class and served most of my time on the USS Roosevelt as part of uh, the Desert Shield. Thank you for having me here. Morning, everybody. Todd Capel, U.S. Army, 
captain. I served in Bosnia and a company commander in Iraq. Good morning. I'm David Capel, Army, E7, 24 years. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Mattis, United States Navy, CTR3, Communications Technician Radio Man. I kind of did some spying, <laughs> so can't tell you anymore. But I was from 1964 to 68. That's it. I'm Sarah Lentz. I was in the U.S. Air Force from 2002 to 2006. I was a combat surgeon. I was in Iraq, took care of some of these service men and women that got blown up by IEDs. Um, I appreciate what you do here at Gerstel. Can't wait, Grace, until it's your turn to be up there in a couple years. Good morning, good morning. Uh, Brian Wilkins, United States Air Force, been in uh, for 21 years, still currently in, uh, served three tours, and I'm currently uh, Inspector General Superintendent. I'm John Hayes, U.S. Navy, uh, aviation boatswain mate, second class. I was on the USS Lake Champlain, and I served from 1955 to 1959. Sergeant First Class Timothy Haran, uh, 09 to his present, did tours in Afghanistan and Djibouti. Um, yeah, still serving. Hi, good morning. My name's Richard Jordan. I was a spec four in the U.S. Army. I served between 1961 and 1965. And thank you for the invitation. And I'd like to give a shout out to my granddaughter, Madison McGinnis. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Dennis Spellin. Uh, my rank is Sergeant, United States Army. Uh, my enlistment was in 66 to 1969. I spent two years in Vietnam. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I've got a long story, but I'm going to cut it short. I was in the Navy 19 July the 17th, 1944. And I stayed in there till 49. Well, I was amphibious force. I made landings. I guess most of you Navy swabby jockeys, brother, know what the amphibious force is. It's rough duty, right? So I served in there till 49. And then from 49, I come out, they said, you got to go. I said, go where? He said, you're going to get discharged. I said, okay. So I come out, and I stayed a month. I went back in. <laughs> there no work out here. I said, I'm going back in the Navy. So I went back into 49. And then 49, they said, you're going to get discharged. I said, okay. So I come out, and I helped join the National Guard. To get them organized when they came back, I got them organized. So I stayed in the National Guard, and I was first class, seemed first class there as a Navy and the first class as a sergeant in the Army. So I stayed there till 86. Then they come out and said, well, you're 60 years old, you got to go. <laughs> I said, what? I said, I'm just getting good now. <laughs> no. 60 years old, you got to go. So I spent 40 years in the National Guard. Hope you all have a good holiday. <laughs> Richard Weaver, U.S. Army uh, Staff Sergeant, uh, 69 to 75. I just have a special shout out for my grandkids, uh, Mackenzie and Charlie here at Stell, and to all Carroll County veterans. 
Carroll County offers services to veterans in Carroll County no other county in the state offers. The veterans shuttle to help you get to any veterans hospital uh, and three service officers to help people get the services they deserve. If you need help with that, see, see me after this. But I just want to say uh, thank you guys for coming. And uh, Senator West is here also representing our district here in Carroll County and uh, part of Baltimore County. I just want to make a uh, welcome, Senator. Hey, good morning. Charlie Jenkins, uh, United States Marine Corps Major, 2005 to present. Happy birthday, Marines. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Captain Fatili, uh, United States Army Reserve, still serving. Uh, big shout out to my daughter and my son, Ayo and David, everyone, and uh, United States Army. Happy birthday. Uh, Jesse Myers, Staff Sergeant, U.S. Army, 68 to 69, Vietnam. Bob Regal, uh, Army, ended up flying helicopters. It seemed like a really good idea at the time. I was in now I'm 68, 69, and 70. And I got out because I didn't want to go back. But I thank everyone here for your service, and glad to be here. I'd just like to thank every one of the veterans who are here. Also, a very welcome home to all you Vietnam veterans. If it weren't for you, we would not have the welcome that we got when we came home from Iraq. Thank you. It's a tough act to follow. Uh, at this point, I'm going to a pair of our eighth graders. We're going to moderate a question and answer session between a few of our lower school students. Any veterans who feel comfortable answering, uh, we'd love to hear. So at this time, Savannah and Nadia. Why did you join the military and what was your hardest moment? Why did you join the military and what was your hardest moment? You go. Thank you. This is back in 69. And my buddy and I, we weren't getting along too well with our parents. So we decided we're going to fix them. <laughs> so we went and we joined on the buddy plan, which lasted three days. That was through orientation. Now, we both went to Nam. Uh, he, he was up north in Fubai. I was down south in Saigon. And we didn't see each other again until we got back, got back stateside. But thank God we got back. But, but I'll tell you what, I'll bet our parents won't do that again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank 
qui sont tués. What did you learn when you served and do you do it now? While you were in the service, did you learn any skills that you use in your daily life? So, um, if you've ever been in combat, um, it's a unique situation. And the thing that I learned the most there was training. In the middle of the night on an aircraft, you start feeling a little scared about things, and then you look around and see all your mates doing their job. So training is what helped that work. sleep when you were in the military and what time? I'll answer this because I know my brothers here will laugh. I was the uh, junior lieutenant on my Navy vessel and as a Marine we get stuck in the worst berthing spots and I walk in this room and there were five bunks that were maybe seven feet high and there was a bunk with a pipe right above it and they stuck me up there for six months and to turn over on my back, I had to get out of the bunk and squeeze in and then go around like this. And down there, the Navy doesn't care about us. And they, they had it like 110 degrees. We're in the South China Sea. Um, but yeah, that's where you sleep when you're in the Marine Corps. Or you sleep on the ground in the rain. Hoorah. Did you have? What jobs did you have? I was a machine gunner in the Marine Corps. Our combat load was roughly two to three hundred pounds. When the bullets flew, we had no there was no weight whatsoever. When fear takes over, your instincts kick in and you just get moving. Thank you. It has become a tradition. Uh, we're going to play the Armed Forces Medley. And this gives uh, those of you who have served an opportunity to stand and show the pride you have for your branch and for your country. So as the music plays, as your service is represented, uh, we ask you to, uh, to stand. Feel free to sing along.
Good morning, my name is John Pelasco, I'm the president here at Bristow Academy. I'm proud of the work we do here with our dedicated faculty and staff, partnering with our parents and families to help our students work to reach their full potential as leaders and learners. Our annual Veterans Day assembly and ceremony is one of my favorite each year. It's our pleasure as a school to pause and express our appreciation for the leadership, honor, and courage our veterans, active duty military and first responders have demonstrated and continue to demonstrate on behalf of our great nation. Thank you for all, thank you all so much for your service and dedication. Thank you for the many sacrifices you've made on behalf of our country and our constitution. And thank you for serving as role models for our students with regards to how you serve in tangible and meaningful ways. I'd also like to pause and I'd like to ask you to join me in congratulating our students who made this morning run so smoothly. Thank you. It's, on, it's an honor for me each November to present the Gerstel Academy Veteran of the Year Award. This year's award recipient truly embody the ethos of service for our country, um, to serve our, excuse me, I'm still kind of moved by the music, I apologize. And seeing you veterans stand for your, your branches song is just such a moving uh, thing for me. Um, it's an honor each November to present the Gerstel Academy Veteran of the Year Award. This year's award recipient truly embodied the ethos of service to our country over the course of his 11 years of service in the United States Marine Corps. I typically, in events like this, when we're presenting something, do work really hard to, uh, to hide the identity of the winner until the very end. And while I will not name the winner until the very end, I'm not gonna work so hard to hide the details because I think it's important as I tell this person's story. So this person attended Princeton University. As a Brown graduate, I've heard that that's one of the top five schools in New Jersey. <laughs> Maybe top six. Back when he was a senior, war in the Persian Gulf erupted, and he felt the calling to serve. Um, and he wanted to leave school early, leave one of the best schools in the country early before graduating to enlist. But his father said, no way, son. You're graduating first. And so he did just that, honoring principle number one, respecting his parents, teachers, and those in authority. He had stars in his eyes and wanted to be a Navy SEAL, but his best friend, Troy, whose father was a retired Marine, convinced him to consider the Marines. And the used car sales pitch was on. So as you can imagine, this, uh, this honoree spent uh, the greater part of his senior year at Princeton researching the different branches of service and um, especially the Marines because of that sales pitch. 
and chose that he decided the Marines was the branch for him and was it ever. I would like to share a quote from the current Commandant of the Marine Corps that says, for 248 years, Marines have earned a reputation as the most disciplined and lethal warfighters in the world. This legacy of honor, courage, and commitment passed on to us was paid for in sweat, blood, and sacrifice. Marines have stepped forward to defend our Constitution when others, when others could not or would not. This person's time in the Marines was demanding physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, but he never faltered, embodying principle number six, approaching every endeavor with passion, conviction, and persistence. In October of, I think, in 1992, our honoree was, uh, had gone through basic training and had entered officer candidate school in Quantico, Virginia, and during that time was promoted to second lieutenant and became an infantry officer. Then the vast expanse of the desert beckoned, and he was sent to a city called 29 Palms, which is in California. It was located in the high desert of Southern California, elevation of about 2,000 feet above sea level, Summer temperatures often exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the home of the Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center, the world's largest Marine Corps training base. Our honoree had the opportunity to spend two and a half lovely years of holiday there in the desert, sort of the beach without the water, right? And while there, he enrolled in Marine Corps Dive School and successfully completed that, successfully completed Airborne School as well. Afterwards, he enrolled in a U.S. Marine Corps Snow Mountain Warfare School, which took him from the frying pan, literally, to the freezer. Only one problem with that was uh, you were required to know how to ski because all the work uh, they do in the uh, Mountain Warfare School uh, is done on skis. And this gentleman did not know how to ski. He had never skied before. Uh, that did not deter him, though. He took a few weeks and taught himself how to ski and successfully made it through that training, learning to survive in, in outdoor conditions. Um, one time, unknowingly, he and his men were stuck in a blizzard uh, with no communication um, to their, uh, their superiors and, and just survived and did a great job. Talk about uh, principles uh, five, six, and seven, and of course, taking action, um, teaching yourself to ski in order to get that training. His service to our country took him all over the world, including places like Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Okinawa, Japan, where he was considered a, a, an oddity by locals, a six foot three inch redheaded American, often having to pause for photographs with, uh, with the local Japanese. After four years of active duty service to our country, he left the military to pursue an MBA at the University of Texas, book him horns, and completed his MBA and entered the world of finance, but the itch to serve returned, and he re-enlisted, this time in the Marine Corps Reserves, and this time he was, uh, was indeed involved in Special Forces, the Third Force Reconnaissance Company. He also was elevated to the rank of Captain. Um, now, the family, as, we, as I was gathering information about our honoree, shared with me that um, our honoree considers uh, one of the reasons why he entered, re-entered the service was uh, providential, because as part of his monthly reserve duty, you'd have to go and, and serve each month, once one weekend a month. And in an airport in Atlanta, he ran into a cute young woman uh, named Catherine, who uh, later became his wife. So you'll have to ask him to tell you that story at some point, students. While he was in the reserves, uh, he got married, war in Iraq broke out, he was called back up to active duty, promoted to major, and sent to Camp Pendleton. After 11 years of faithful service, he was honorably discharged. An incredible 11-year journey decorated with many medals, including the Navy Divers Medal, the Parachute Jump Wings Medal, National Defense Medal, Expert Rifle Badge, and Expert Pistol Badge. So to put it in layman's terms, you do not, not want to mess around with this dude. Though no longer in active service, his spirit forever echoes Emperor, Emperor Fidelis, always faithful. I made a mistake about a year ago referring to him as a former Marine, was quickly correct, uh, corrected and was told that once a Marine, always a Marine. And I'm a retired Marine, thank you very much. <clears throat> I appreciate the, the uh, correction. Our winner embodies a Gersell Academy motto of leadership, honor, and courage to a T. 
He also perfectly embodies the Marine Corps motto of Semper Fidelis, again, always faithful. There were a couple interesting coincidences uh, as we did our research here. Um, I, I like to refer to them as, as Providence. Um, as you've heard several times today, today is the Marine Corps birthday, 248 years of Marine Corps. Happy birthday, Marine Corps. Our, our honoree, as you know, is a Marine Corps veteran. Today is also our honoree's own birthday, which is interesting. He was born on the Marine Corps birthday. He was literally born to be a Marine. And that commandant I quoted earlier, his name is General Eric Smith. Eric Smith happens to be the same name, different person, but same name as our founder's youngest son. So a lot of interesting coincidences there. Our honoree today embodies all that is good about the Marine Corps and about Gersell Academy's leadership model. There is a plaque that hangs in the alumni house. In fact, it's on the wall right now, and his name has been added to that plaque. That plaque lists our previous Gerstel Academy Veterans of the Year. Um, I know we have a few veterans, previous Gerstel Academy Veterans of the Year here today, and so after the ceremony, I'll ask them to come join me for a photograph with this year's winner. Please join me in recognizing and congratulating Gerstel Academy um, Veteran of the Year, this is a Gerstel Academy parent and also a leadership instructor, retired Major David Gaines. As we conclude this morning's gathering, I stand before, the, before this esteemed audience of students, faculty, parents, distinguished guests, and our respected United States veterans. I would also like to express our profound gratitude to our veterans who have protected the freedom and sovereignty of this nation. Today's ceremony has been a testament to honoring the selfless service of those who have valiantly defended our nation. These individuals, the embodiment of courage and the living representation of what it means to be a leader, risk their lives daily to protect our citizens. Their unwavering dedication and sacrifice deserve our utmost respect and recognition. Together in unity, we pay tribute to all who have served, are serving, and will continue to serve, ensuring their legacy of bravery and commitment endures. I want to express appreciation to some of the many people who have made today's ceremony possible. First, thank you to some some of our students for doing an outstanding job for both the program and on Fox 45 News this morning. Thank you also to our student readers. Thank you to Mr. Casey, Ms. Wargo, Ms. Sprinkle, Ms. Luke, and all the behind, for all the behind scenes planning and organizing, and Ms. Kowalski for making the PAC Cafe beautiful for our guests. Thank you to the IT department and Mr. Stem, as well as our facilities department. We also want to express appreciation to Dr. Smith and P Mr. Pulasco for their support of this important ceremony and ruling. Lastly, thank you to anyone who played a role in today's events. We appreciate you to attending today's Veterans Day ceremony and hope everyone has a wonderful Veterans Day tomorrow. We have a tradition of singing our alma mater at the conclusion of events and ceremonies. Please rise and join us. The lyrics are on the screen. Thank you. 
That concludes this morning's ceremony, but I, I offer the students the next five minutes to uh, greet any of their veterans, neighbors, friends, grandparents. Uh, descend upon them and express your appreciation. And in five minutes, I'll turn it over to an administrator to send you back to class.